Okay, so I'm not here today to convince you about global warming. I'm here to talk about the pred predicted impacts of climate change on sea turtles. So as we heard from previous speakers, there's already a lot of evidence from climate change and predictions are for further increase in temperature in the future. So predicted increase in temperature is likely to affect a whole array of different species, especially those that are heavily reliant on environmental temperature, such as sea turtles. So temperature plays a major role in sea turtle embryo development, hatchling success, and hatchling sex ratio. So if you look at this graph here, you can see that in order for sea turtle eggs to successfully incubate, they have to incubate within a narrow thermal range. Anything above or below this will cause the eggs not to develop and they'll die. In addition to this, sea turtles have temperature-dependent sex determination. So differently to us, where our sex is determined by chromosomes, for sea turtles, their sex is determined by descent temperature. So warmer temperature produces more females, and cooler temperature produces more males. So with predicted increasing temperature, it's likely that there'll be a feminization of sea turtle populations, and also a decrease in hatchling success. And this is what I call the bachelor's paradise, where we're gonna have quite a lot of female turtles to only a few lucky male turtles. So for my work, I'm interested to understand how predicted increase in temperature will impact the reproductive output of marine turtles. So I have used the Northern Great Barrier Reef green turtle population as a case study, and this is actually the largest green turtle population in the world. So if you have a look at this map, you can see the nesting grounds for this population, and they nest mainly in Torres Strait and the Northern Great Barrier Reef. And the red dots here are the most important nesting sites for this population. And for those of you who are here in the morning, you heard Helene Marsh talk about Rain Island and some of the issues that Rain Island, Rain Island is currently experiencing. And Rain Island is the main nesting site for this population. So this population not, is not only important ecologically, but also social and culturally, as indigenous Australians rely on this turtle population as a food source and for social gatherings and ceremonies. So it's very important to understand what might happen in the future with this population as climate change progresses. So um, in order to understand or to be able to predict the sex ratio of hatchlings being produced at each of those nesting grounds for this population, I have been monitoring the sand temperature and the, uh, the nest temperature at each of those nesting grounds for the last seven years. I have also developed microclimate and correlative models where I look of the, in the relationship between environmental variables such as air temperature and sea, sea surface temperature with sand temperature to be able to predict sand temperature in the future. So I use both of these informations together with um, information on the relationship between the temperature of the sand and the sex of the hatchlings to be able to predict with what might happen in the future. So here I'm just gonna provide a snapshot of what we predict will happen in the future as climate change progresses. So the circles will we represent the proportion of sex ratio that is predicted to occur at each of the nesting grounds. And just to make it easy, uh, the pink represent areas that will produce more females and the blue rep represent areas that will produce more males. So here on the first map, we have the predictions for um, the sex ratio of each of the nesting grounds for 2030 in an extreme scenario of climate change. And basically what you can see is that the majority of the nesting grounds will be producing a high proportion of female turtles. But most importantly, we're able to identify one nesting ground, Sandbank 7, that will produce mainly uh, male turtles. And this is very important for conservation initiatives as protecting these rookeries. It could be really important to uh, sustain the viability of this population. So here we look at the predictions for 2070, so more in the long term, and what you can see is that likely we're gonna have a feminization of sea turtle populations with the majority of the nesting grounds producing mainly female turtles. So what does this uh, feminization of sea turtle population actually mean? So in the short term, over the next 20 to 30 years, we actually think that this feminization will be, will be beneficial for sea turtle populations. Because more females actually means more eggs, which might uh, result in uh, population growth. However, in the long term, when we only have a few male turtles being produced, we think there might be some issues. 
So historically, sea turtle populations are known to be female biases, but we, we don't understand how many males we actually need to sustain a sea turtle population. So the next questions of my work is trying to understand the operational sex ratio of sea turtle populations. So in other words, I want to understand how many males do we actually need and how many females can one male turtle handle? Thank you. Thank you.